Sweet Maya is freeze drying some fruit. Got some barista action going on in there. Pressure's on. Oh no. Oh no. I ain't gonna get nothing. Nothing. So pretty. Little. <laughs> Little. <laughs> Scraping a vanilla bean. So fancy. Maya is making some pear butter out of pears from our tree. Looks good. All right, so we've got the pear butter in here. Are you about to start that? Yes. Where did you get a recipe for that? The Google. <laughs> I mean, I do what my mom does. You Google the best crock pot pear butter recipe and you go with the first one that shows up. There you go. That doesn't say add, because they pay for that. <laughs> We've got some bell peppers from the garden, which we're going to freeze dry these into strips, which can be eaten like snacks or reconstituted and put in cooking. Um, some bananas and apples. These are a little on the ripe side, so we're gonna go ahead and put them in the freeze dryer. Our kids will demolish these. These are just snacks for them. I mean, they ate a whole tray in like 20 minutes. Oh yeah. So That was all five of the boys that ate that whole tray. But just freeze dried apples and bananas for snacks. So, Daniel? Oh guys, I forgot to tell you Daniel's here. Uh, but we grab some of these trays and carry think them down. I you're gonna have to carry one. I only got two uh, hands each. Okay, yeah, or stack them. Okay, you can do that. I'll carry the camera. I'll carry our friends that live on the internet. That live on the internet. <laughs> Taking the toys upstairs. All right, let's go out here. We haven't really shown a lot of the freeze dryer because when I was going through setting it up, there was like all these warnings of like, don't do this, it could be dangerous. And I was like, I better make sure like, I like was very Understand. <laughs> because I'm like, I don't need to like try and freeze dry some apples and blow our garage up. It's actually, they make it sound serious and it is, but it's super simple the way that they explain it. Once you kind of understand what they're referencing, it's easy. So we're gonna do some more like thorough freeze dryer videos. Cause I think we finally have the, I think we have it figured out. I actually told you guys, I told them when we first got it, we were gonna work out the kinks and figure out how to use it. There's a bit of a responsibility involved whenever you have a lot of people that watch your videos because if we like give bad advice or say the wrong thing, it's, you know, you don't wanna do that. So we wanted to figure it out. And this is what, the fourth or fifth round that we freeze dried? Fifth round. Fifth round that we freeze dried. And I feel like we've got it pretty, pretty well figured out. So you put things that are the more like flavorful things towards the stuff, the top, which I don't think that those are sweet peppers. It'd be different if they were hot peppers. Yeah, but because flavors can transfer. Yeah. All right, insert our trusty pad. Turn this closed. Continue. Freezing. Nice. Oh, Bruce, taking it easy on the couch. Hey, buddy. Bruce had surgery this week. He's recovering. He will no longer be able to create any Bruce Juniors, which is how we like our cats. Right, Bruce? It was a rough week for him, but it'll be better in the long run. So I do want to show you guys a little bit here see this workspace down here. We talked about this on a live, but we have not shared about it in a vlog. Kind of in the works for a while. We had to work out some different kinks and details, but we've launched our shop on our website. And the first thing that we are selling on the shop are vinyl die cut stickers. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of this. So basically the idea of this was to be able to create some merch that would be available at a or price point. It would be something that's fun. I personally love stickers. There are stickers all over my I think that's really where it stems from. Uh, probably, probably that, that stemmed it first. And Malia loves stickers. Yeah, and Malia loves and stickers. All the little boys <laughs> stickers. Also, our desire in this was to be able to highlight 
different artists. And so every month we're going to be featuring a different artist and having some limited edition stickers as well as some that will remain available uh, month after month in our shop. And this month we worked with an artist, her name is Kelly Robertson. Uh, she's very, very gifted, precious uh, woman that I absolutely love the things that she came up with that were Roots and Refuge to her. So I'm going to show you guys a few of these. I'll put a link to the shop down below. Uh, this I think is probably my my favorite I don't know I like a lot of them but I really like this this is the biggest sticker and it says the best medicine for the garden is the gardener which is a quote there and it's really beautiful and then here are a couple of other ones that Kelly did here's one every gardener needs a chair of course a sunflower so these are just different things and there are a couple others and then there are also some that I designed uh, like this So Kindness Reap Beauty. Of course, this is one that was on a t-shirt that we sold for a long time. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the possibility of getting into other products later, but we wanted to start small because this is launching a business. Yeah, well, the first conversation is, we'll just sell some stickers on our website. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. For like, all no. of you internet business, small business owners, we like, applaud we, you. We <laughs> applaud you. Like, I, my brain is tired. Usually I'm physically tired. I'm physically, like, needing to get out and work on something. I'm mentally tired. Like, having to figure out taxes, shipping, like, yeah. all that. Like, I was like, man, I did not realize we were getting to. All the details. Luckily, we got it figured out. Yep. Um, we have shipped our first orders. They're on their way. So yep. So those will be arriving. Things are worked out. To people. It's been really fun, like, coming up with packaging and all the different things. And just... Um, well, I'm not going to show no, you all that. Show <laughs> and so, yeah, like this has been really fun. And our vision, of course, we have the big vision here on our farm. Um, you know, we talk, we've shared this with you guys, but I love uh, educating people how to grow food. And so our big vision is the ability to have like a learning center and a farm to table restaurant, do internships and really teach people. Right now we're really in the classroom for us for that, we're learning. But part of being able to generate opportunities like that is uh, entrepreneurship and, and having businesses. So this is like a step in that direction mm -hmm. for us. We should do a vision casting video. So we should, we really should be able to have something to share with you guys. We'll, that, we'll put that on the list. Right now we have to get ready for goats. See you Bruce, keep recovering. He's like, I'm over you. This oh. is the mayfly house. Look at that, that's so funny. This is so where they funny. built the house. Yep. Yesterday it had like five mayflies in it. That's so funny. My kids build houses for the mayflies all the time. That's awesome. All right, so our friend Daniel is here from Alabama staying this weekend. And <laughs> he's like out there in the out fringes. The, and those are the frame. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually have a really busy farm evening. We have two things that we have to do today. So I told you guys the other day I bought some goats. Again. Don't even. You're the one who told me to. You are taking responsibility for this. You don't get to tell me to buy goats. But so throw Nubians, me under the so bus. So he he told I me that Nubians. I should look for some Nubians. I found a small herd that was for sale from a local family. They're not far from here. Turns out they're viewers of our channel, which was really cool. So we're gonna go get those. However, Maya has to go to our friend's store that has the honey, we call it the honey store, Brothers Honey in Conway, and they have a commercial kitchen where they do honey extraction. And he's taking some frames of honey up there, and it just so happens that the time that they were able to have us up there was the same time that I had planned to go get these goats. Thankfully, Daniel's in town, so he's gonna help me and the kids go goat wrangling. And I'm gonna take the frames of Maya. honey up to Brothers Honey and learn how to spin and Is that show. first time? Showed their operation. Honestly, they just expanded into a new store's front and it's really cool. Yeah, so he's gonna do that. But we need to go around real quick and talk about what we need to do to get ready for these goats. Look at these guys. This is a chatty crew. Hey, good morning. Hello. <laughs> Quite the barnyard gathering. <laughs> I can't get over how empty this is. Hey Daniel, you wanna sow some seeds while you're here? That'd be fun. We can we need to plant these two beds. I've got some started brassicas, but they're little puny things. I may try to just direct sow some stuff out here. 
All right, so it's Saturday morning. Tonight we're going to get the goats and now we have to get ready for them. Did you see over here? Look at this. I put Maggie in here with Dr. Ennis because she was flirting so hard. Now all these girls are going into heat and they're like rubbing all up on the fence. I know, I saw them. Even the little Nigerian dwarfs are like, hey, I'm like, girl, you don't even know what you're asking for. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> so I actually did not realize in getting these new goats that one of them was in milk. Right. We're getting four Nubians. All of them have kitted before, which is great. And all of them have been milked before, which is also great. That is such an awesome thing. I've had to break so many first fresheners on the milk stand and train them how to be milked that the idea of getting four experienced milkers is like mm -hmm. very nice. But one of them is still in milk. She actually just kitted last month. And I didn't, I didn't realize that uh, when I first had worked out this deal. So it's like a major bonus. I really, really was hoping to be able to get a doe in milk this fall. But because of that, my original plan was to put them over in that yard that we had resting but that's not going to work because I'm going to have milk. to milk her yeah. um, now, starting now. So we need to put them up here by the house where the barn with the milk stall is. Which means we've got to move little manches in with Dr. Ennis out. Yeah. So they're going to go to the rested yard and then the new ones will come up here close to the house. Right. Look at this. They are flirting so hard. <laughs> They're like, hey. <laughs> Girls. Dr. Ennis, you box you. So when you get new um, livestock in, like these new goats, it's really best to isolate them and make sure that they're healthy. Now, it, there are exceptions to that. Like if you absolutely know where they came from and you know that uh, that they don't have anything going on that might be transmittable to your other goats, you know, you could put them in together. But while I don't have any suspicions at all that there's anything wrong with these and, you know, I've gotten great information from the family, I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in this yard together. The other thing is, is that sometimes when you're mixing herds, uh, they can, by trying to establish like the new order of authority, they can hurt each other. And so by putting them in here on the other side of the fence from my other Nubians, they'll be able to meet each other through the fence. And when we put them together, there won't be like a herd clash, clash royale. Daniel, you miss your lady friends. <laughs> Daniel used to come out here and sing to the goats. So they, they're like, hey, we remember you. Hey, Maggie girl. Hey, girly. <laughs> Hey, little darling. Maggie was my first goat. We've been together for quite a while, haven't we, girl? It's a girl of this pits looking right at you. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Make my mohawk stand up. <laughs> Look at him. They're, and they're all fighting. So, such a mess. All the, they're going nuts for him over there. It's a Maggie girl. I still love you. <laughs> what do you want to do about the Nigerian dwarves? Just get a little buck for them? A little boo thing? A little Glen Coco? <laughs> yeah, our Glen Coco that we had for our Mean Girls herd, he ended up being a little stunted. And the other ones, the other babies we have are too closely related, so we're gonna have to get a outside, outside buck. They are all about Dr. Ennis, but he's too big for them. Can't, you can't breed like dwarf goats and Nigerian dwarfs to a full-size goat because the babies be way too big. It can, it can kill them. Maya, it's shaping up to look like it's going to be a pretty goaty spring. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you say nothing. I'm speechless. I'm so impressed with our goatiness. <laughs> I am excited to have milk again, though. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Man, I just stepped in some ants. I got ate up by them. Ouch. Nothing but trouble. <laughs> I'm not up to trouble. You're not up to trouble? You want to say hi to our friends? Yes, hi. Uh -huh. Here's Nan and Poppy sitting on the front. Are you having a cup of tea? Having a cup of tea. Nice. <laughs> We're doing yeah, a beautiful good. day. It is beautiful. Yeah, hi to everybody. So I'm actually sitting here editing the video that you guys just um, watched and realized I did not 
film my sign off. And Daniel is reading a book about coffee and just shared an interesting tidbit with me. First recorded uh, thing of someone consuming or using coffee was in modern day, what is known as modern day Ethiopia. And uh, so if you enjoy Ethiopian, going back to the original. <laughs> but uh, it actually was discovered by a goat herder, which is kind of cool. Got some love of goats around these parts. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> it's kind of the theme of this video. It's like, <laughs> my love of goats. Yeah, and the first oh. consumption of coffee was actually not in a drink, but was made into a gum that they would chew to get a temporary energy boost. Pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. I think the fact that the first instance of coffee being discovered was by a goat herder. I just think that we should take a moment of appreciation for goat herders everywhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna end this video now. You are actually seeing this the day that it's shot. Um, however, we are going to be having lots of exciting things this evening. There's gonna be a couple video shots. I think you're shooting a video. You're, he's shooting, a, he's taking a camera to shoot a video of the honey extraction. I'm gonna take a camera for our goat acquisition. Goat acquisition. It's a thing, okay? <laughs> I'm excited, I'm so excited today. Getting new goats is like, I mean, it's like goat Christmas. That should be a thing that we celebrate multiple times a year. <laughs> Maybe we should have a cup of Ethiopian coffee. <laughs> I agree, I think that's a good <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you, until next time.